My guest, Frank Mitch, he is an expert in the chemical business. He's a managing director at BB&T Capital Markets. All right, Frank, is the recovery for real? I mean, this is, you know, the definition of a cyclical business. Is the recovery really here? You know, I, I, I really think it is. I think it's not just what we're seeing uh, in the uh, Asian economies and how that has progressed quite nicely, but you're really seeing it happen here in the U.S., uh, volumes, uh, particularly in the automotive space. We've talked about that before, Pim. That has come back quite nicely. The housing, it's not going to be as bad. Oh, oh, 2010 cannot be as bad as 2009. So I think you're going to see uh, a pretty good volume recovery, uh, not just in the U.S., but uh, across the, the globe. In fact, the American Chemistry Council just put out their end-of-year uh, piece, and they're looking at 4.6 percent global growth in 2010 for chemicals. Interestingly enough, the volumes were down over 4.5% uh, in 2009. So we're going to make some of that back. We're not going to get 100% of the way back. Now, one of the things that you have been looking at is this whole destocking phenomena versus real demand in the economy. And you're coming down and saying there's some demand. I, I, absolutely. I, what we saw at the end of 08 and early part of 09 was clearly destocking. It wasn't indicative of underlying demand. In the last half of this year, we've been seeing underlying demand. We haven't been seeing restocking, particularly if you think about many companies want to want to pare down their inventories, particularly at end of year. We're not. We have not seen the restocking phase. So as I look at uh, 2010, my default position is we're not going to go through destocking because Mama the cupboards are bare, but there's more likely an opportunity for us to do some modicum of restocking. And you also make the point, right, that it is no longer about margins because the chemical companies, by and large, they've gone through cost cuts, they've gone through a restructuring, they can maintain their pricing. This is about being able to fulfill volume contracts. Uh, absolutely. In, in fact, Pim, we did an interesting analysis. If you look at pricing in the chemical industry versus crude oil, it overshot on the way down in late 08, early 09. Chemical prices, uh, oil prices were plunging, chemical prices plunged even faster. They bottomed, and throughout uh, 2009, they've been chipping back. Even though oil's been coming back, they've been chipping back. Now, what's good uh, about the North American chemical industry is most of our chemicals uh, are produced via natural gas, which is not exploded in, in pricing uh, as oil has. So they've done even better uh, on the margin front. At this point, though, a lot of the, the low-hanging fruit for, with cost reduction has been done. There's still some companies that are going to see benefits uh, in 2010 on the cost reduction side. But once you've got a lean, mean uh, fighting machine and you've got volumes layered on top of that, you're going to have some pretty good profits out there. All right. Tell me about uh, whether Poly One, one of the companies you cover, symbol P-O-L, is that a lean, mean fighting machine? They've got new management. They've gone through a major restructuring, and they're really focused on, as they said, they want pricing. A absolutely. And uh, the, the, the CEO of that company has done a phenomenal job. He came from a more specialty-oriented background where the focus was on gross profit and not necessarily on pounds out the door. So he has incentivized the sales force to go after the gross profit opportunities. And in many cases, that means when the customer gives you a little bit of resistance, don't automatically slash the price, which is the knee-jerk reaction of most co commodity companies out there. And so what he has been able to do over the past uh, two and a half years is take a company that maybe had two, three percent of their sales in commodity-oriented products to close to 50 percent of their profits are now coming from more specialty-oriented uh, businesses. Now, in the stock, I know that you've talked about Poly One in the past. The stock has really gone gangbusters. And you've still got, what, about an $8 price target on the shares? I, 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 I do, but, uh, you know, as we, uh, as we look at the situation and as we're looking at 2010 and so forth, uh, we could see ourselves getting even more constructive uh, on that in terms of a, in terms of a target price. Uh, we feel that the fourth quarter is probably trended a little bit better than what we had thought back in late October, early November when we put our, out our, our earnings increases. Clearly, the automotive space has done better in terms of production uh, than what was uh, anticipated back then. And while seasonally the housing market, this is not a good uh, time of year for them, uh, it's, it's uh, compared to where we were a year ago. It's a heck of a lot better. All right. So even though the stock has run, you still like it. You still think it's uh, it's there's, there's value for investors Pim, to get in. Pim, what I would say about that is, I think number one, numbers in terms of estimates have to come up. And if that happens and people get more comfortable that we've seen the sea change in commodity versus specialty orientation, that means the earnings multiple comes up. I like that recipe. All right.